You're on. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Plus 63 HP D&D podcast campaign number one with the Silver Shadows. I am Raymond, your host today, and I play Asumedos, your charming Hexblade Tiefling Warlock. And with me are the bravest adventurers one could ever ask to travel the world and land of D&D with. Let me start off with the man in black wearing Mr. Beast's t-shirt, Jong. Hi, I'm John. I play Itsuki, the Rogue Ranger, uh, uh, Yuanti Pureblood, uh, very uh, nice and humble and loving and caring uh, for the group. And partially lying, uh, doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go on next. The man in red, um, the father figure of the group. Let's call Chill box on the screen. Hello, hello. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, I'm excited to uh, get some loot today. I play uh, Malak the Asamar Paladin that's borderline serial killer. And of course, next up is the only one whose age is almost half of ours, but it normally doesn't show. Let me call on the screen, Isa B. Hi, I'm Isa, and I play Shivra, the steady and shy uh, tabaxi, and she is a fighter. That she is. Doesn't show because we seem younger or because she seems older? (laughs) I'll leave the crowd to decide. (laughs) They can leave that in the comments. You know, you better follow us on socials. And of course, watch us on Twitch. Wow. So next is our amazing storyteller, our world weaver, the one and only Dungeon Master, DM Angelo. Hi. So yeah, uh, I'm Angelo. I'm the DM. So yeah, I'll be playing everyone else. Um, So yeah, let's just jump into today's session. So yeah. um, So yeah, so last week... um, so yeah, an enclave saved from jeopardy. So yeah, so uh, the Great Worm Cavern has just been saved by the Silver Shadows and their allies. And while our heroes can hopefully recover from their dangerous journey so far, uh, hopefully uh, they'll find some answers um, as they continue on to the Eye of the All Father. So again, picking up where we left off last time, um, the battle is done. Um, the undead minions have fallen, and their it seems their master has fallen as well, a stone giant, from the looks of it, who has succumbed to um, Itsuki's lethal attacks. So. Her body lies there, dead. But at the center, there is this still, the barely breathing stone giant that um, this other stone giant seemed to be casting, using as part of a ritual. Is um, there a map? You, I'm sorry. You... Is there a map or... It's, it's blank. blank for now. Okay, okay. It's, it's just blank. It's blank for now. Okay, okay. Uh, around you, again, are the five monoliths. And you were able to successfully take down the... Um, take down the rune stones that were placed on top of it, siphoning off the energy. And f- the two of the monoliths are very curious indeed, as you see, due to the actions of the other stone giant. Um, protruding are two giant figures, one in each monolith. Um, they still are in, like, in stone form, but otherwise they are unmoving. Uh, Harshnag is along with you. Or actually, both your allies, Harshnag and Weevil, are still with you, but very much hurt from this whole encounter. And yeah, at this point, what does the party want to do? Shall we tend to the injured giant? Okay, as you approach the giant at the center, um, you hear uh, who approaches by itsuki i assume it's itsuki since you're the one who said it first I, i'm the only one who can speak giant right oh i can she well. she well. you can yeah I maybe we should also. use maybe i'll go approach and just... i'll go loot Same. <laughs> yeah. I'll go. i was thinking i was gonna go check the staff okay so 
Um, Malak, you can I you can roll me. Like, what do you want to loot? Because uh, I'll, I'll check with the you... with the big giant first. Yeah. Which one? The the dead one big, or yeah the the, the, the dead one the 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 boss okay. the bad the, the bad one we boss. the one we killed yeah okay 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 so um Malak, I'd say you would know that giants they're they have an innate power within them so you would know that some of their parts might be useful so if you want you can roll me a medicine check to see what you can get medicine and that's plus zero and then plus one and then for you oh, shit. Uh, uh, and then for you um uh Asumedos. you can roll me an arcana if you want to focus on the staff okay 18 plus 8, baby. I, I got an 11. 11. I'd say, you know, um, yeah. you're able to identify parts of the stone giant's toenails that could um, fetch a very good price in the market <laughs> once you return to civilization. <laughs> I put my mask, and, my mask back on to hide my disgust. Roll me an intel here. Roll me an intelligence check. Oh shit! Uh, sorry, a history, a history check. Uh, a zero. Oh. Oh, nineteen. Natural you, nineteen. You recall in your travels, um, in your trainings and whatnot, you've heard stories of the power of alchemy, and that. To imbue the you to imbue the strength of a giant, a key component in distilling a giant's strength is eating the toenail. <laughs> extracting <laughs> extracting the essence through giant toenails. As in that's a key component in making <laughs> these potions. Ew, gross. <laughs> and you remember drinking a hill giant potions l giant strength potion that is true you remember you remember in the in the small yeah class a floating piece of an identified cartridge that's just floating in the in the liquid god damn it but yes for i guess for for simplicity's sake let's uh key it at um you're able to extract enough toenails worth um, 250. So do I, do you still want me to go straight to the gold or do you want me to toenails first? Um, What's more exciting? <laughs> let's go toenails first. But let's okay. say the moment you, the moment you come across like a vendor uh, down with trade. It's it's uh, let that can happen in the background. So, so no stone di stone giant toenails. Yes, yes, yes. Worth two hundred fifty. You're not able. To, yeah, you're not able to get like the full set because due to the battle. Like, yeah, some of it broke. She stubbed her. She stubbed her toe, so it's like it broke off. So like you can't find it. You can't you can't find it anymore. Um, and then on her body, on her body, you notice uh, a couple of trinkets. Um, you know, uh, a stalactite dagger, um, a stalactite carving, magic. a very inter yeah, a very in a very masterful stone craft carving of a uh, of a bear, um, and all that. Uh, let's just put that all lump. Let's lump some all of that to. Um, let's see. Hmm. Um, around uh, 232 gold so yeah so just, that's just miscellaneous items yes 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 232 and then yeah so and then for you um, for you Asumedos as you focus on the staff um, 
actually it's not necessarily the staff that is magical uh the actual body of the staff seems rather mundane made out of a very smooth stone uh, it's very craft it's the craftsmanship's excellent but it's mundane what catches your attention like all staves are are is at the head of the staff uh clear crystal that is uh very much flowing in necromatic energy um and you recall during the fight that this stone giant was indeed siphoning off um energies in the air through the monoliths through the stone giants that perhaps were inside you don't know as of this moment what exactly happened but you do know that these energies are being siphoned off from this site into this uh the head of this crystal uh unfortunately right now it's a bit too heavy for you uh as a meadows to lift as this is made for giants I but see. you do know you do know that there are swirling inside there in the ether of um it's weird actually because like it's a clear crystal but when you look at it it's it's dark and it's it's it represents like a void and there's just like swirling green energy inside Interesting. So I can't do anything about this stuff. Uh yet. Yeah. Drink it. So yeah, uh for the two of you, what exactly are you doing? Like you just go there and like heal the giant or yeah, like I, mean, uh... I have uh I don't know if this accurately listed, but I have five potions of healing. If I give him one, will that enough to not for him to not die? Ah, uh, well, mechanically, yes, but you know, the visuals is like, um, visually, you're giving a giant a very small vial, a very small one. Well, that's but the... like, mecha- but mechanically, it, it it works the same. Uh, it'll give I you just a giant chuck one just to make sure that uh, he doesn't die on us. Um, the breathing, it's very ragged. You've actually, as you approach, you feel just because of the sheer size difference, you feel whenever he breathes out through his mouth, the air vibrates and, you know, you feel the vibrations through you just because of the sheer size of the size difference. And, um, as you give the potion, I'd say you don't, you can't really administer the potion. You just find like an open wound and just like, you pour it there. Um, it, the breathing it takes a while but the breathing eventually stabilizes out um to the point that the giant actually looks moves his hand and is able to, like the, the giant was looking now straight up and now this giant's able to turn his head and from the side looks at the two of you and you see this um looking at this giant closely it seems like a very old giant it's as if a cliff that has been beset by centuries of wind uh dark skin that has been um dark skin that looks like a dark stone almost that has been decorated with paintings and maybe even like a uh, ritual scarring or maybe almost and as this uh, stone giant looks at you he says words in giant and the both of you can if since the both of you can speak giant you understand it as a simple thank you Good. and he continues am i looking at my saviors or am i looking at those who will let me continue on. Well, we're definitely your saviors. <clears throat> Maybe he knows. Uh, he, he gives a deep. He gives a deep sigh. He gives a deep sigh. Um. Yeah, I'd say at this point, uh, it's a harsh. Harsh nag approaches the stone giant. And um, the you see the other you see the stone giant like um, his eyes widen a little bit. Uh, easy insight for the two of you. It's Kia and Shivra, the recognition. And the, yeah, the stone giant just goes, "I know you. 
And then Harshnag just says, I have visited here before. If uh, you do not remember, her name's Harshnag. And it takes a moment for the stone giant to nod before replying, Ah, yes, I have heard that name has been uttered before. Um, yeah. Uh, at this point, what does the party do? I uh, assume at this point, um, as for Medus, you can come back. Malak, you're still busy chopping away those toenails. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Like, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a giant. It's a giant. So, like, <laughs> so I'm like, that's going to take some time. Um, you are rolling, correct? He nods. You are what? Rolling. Rolling. That's, that's his name. The name. How do you... Is this in, in Giant? So I don't understand it, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, the conversation started in Giant. So, we're like, yeah, they, they talk in Giant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be, like, asking Itsuki, what are they saying? What's the name? How do you spell it? R-O-L-I-N. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Roll, yeah, rolling. exactly what my, my, my mind went to. <laughs> Tell me... What happened here? That will be a tale if when we're more comfortable. Why don't you help me up? And yeah, the giant asks. Yeah. Um, I guess with your strength, it's easy enough to help them up. And um, see, as he's able to sit up, you see um, dark blood coming out of his uh, wounds and he gets you know basically his outfit and tries to patch it up and then Harshnag just Harshnag just butts in and says basically asks about medical supplies and whatnot or anything that can help you and Roland just indicates to one of the Roland just says uh, there is a room um, there is a chamber beneath the hill you find cloth and whatnot and yeah, Harsha leaves. Um, in the meantime, he turns to you, Shibra, and uh, says, Betrayal from our own kind. But unsurprising, but yet it still hurts nonetheless. I would have expected stone giants to be above the ordining but it seems it is not and once again I am reminded that it is only it is true that true merit can be measure, only be measured in storm giant communities uh, do you continue Shibra? Uh, I I just nodded. Uh, so this place, uh, what can you tell me about it? It is a place for minds to gather and for minds to seek inspiration for their works. It is where one looks up and as he looks up you see once again the very intricately carved ceiling the domed ceiling with the gemstones twinkling like even in the dim light even in the it's so high actually it's quite dark but piercing through the darkness are the small bits of light coming through the various gemstones that line the entire domed ceiling and it it is a magnificent sight many a stone giant have come here seeking inspiration for what is the worth of a stone giant if not their work of art or their understanding of the greater world <laughs> okay. so travelers may come and rest here on their way to wherever it is they may go in the mountains well 
if travelers know what to look for, but typically our location is only known amongst our kind. Mm. And of course, those who are knowledgeable in things outside their own community. And he gives a small nod in the direction of Arshnav. Mm. Uh, what can you tell us about this traitor and when you started suspecting them of anything, if anything? Uh, at this point, Roland's face turns a bit sour. He's, his eyes are cast downward and you know, uh, a sadness washes over him. We heard a great sadness from the southern mountains. But we did not expect it to come from our own kin. To be honest, this attack was their confirmation. And until now, today, I had hoped that stone giants would be above attacking their own. But I have been too far removed from stone giant society. We all have. He turns and looks around at the five monoliths. So, what is to say of the current events outside? I look to Itsuki. I... <laughs> current events outside. Uh... Although, from the conversation, from the conversation, you do get that he knows that the ordering is dissipated. Uh-huh. That much is clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We might have some something to do with that too. We're yeah. on a mission. We're on a mission to try to get at the root cause of all of this and see what can be helped, what can be fixed to set things right again. Um, yes. There's chaos in the land. Ah, that would explain much. The winds have been restless. The stones have been rumbling. Yeah, any other information that will guide us, point us to the right mm -hmm. direction. Yes. This traitor, do you know them by name? No, but I think I know what they are planning. What do they have to gain from what they were doing to you? He points to the direction of the... He says, bring me her mask. Uh, I, I go up and and get it okay. and bring it yeah, and as you as you uh, as you reach up and get the mask you see Malak like finishing up uh, <gasps> with the toenails like you're at the last pinky still it's with the toenails yeah you're, you're at the last pinky you're at the last pinky though so like this should be Watch. quick <laughs> punching on the toenail <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'd say when Shiva comes back Malak you'd be done already so, uh, <laughs> after the last toenail, what would you do? What would you have done? Uh, loot, loot, checking the other bodies. Oh, no, no. Oh, the other bodies are like, they're just undead. Oh, just yeah, undead? Yeah. So, you're not, you, you won't get much. Like, uh, um, yeah. I want to check if, can, can we save those stone giants that are protruding from the obelisks? Oh, you don't know. You don't, you don't have enough information. Okay, so uh, I go. You can only are. You can run the Arcana if you want, just for like initial like scan from your Arcana or Nature or uh, I failed that... eight eight plus Arcana Nature or Arcana or Nature. Oh uh, eight. Same. Eight. Um, 
you know, uh, what magic has done, perhaps magic can reset. Like, so I'll <laughs> I'll go to Shiva and ask her to translate if are those stone giants alive? Can they be saved? Um, are there is there text inscription? No, no. I'm gonna no. What you you ask. I'm gonna ask you to ask the stone giant. Ask Sorry. the stone um, giant. Okay, okay. Yeah, I go up and ask him. So of of the of the two the two pillars that you see right now, what's happening with them? Uh, those are two of our own, Krishalir and uh, Vanash. Currently undertaking their Olak Mora. Um, translation, it's like the great stillness. Uh, seeing your, seeing your, uh, seeing as you have, uh, he continues further. Um, he says, the dream, uh, the dream plane above is a very chaotic place and often one has to meditate and to center oneself to understand everything and to do that one must enter the great stillness to be one with stone and to enter deep meditation Two of my kin are currently under taking their own. They are neither here nor there. But they are one with stone and thus are one with everything. It their turn to their turn for their watch will be in a while perhaps in the next century or so how may they have been affected with this interruption of their meditation are they what's their current state you you think mm, okay he studies his two colleagues, I guess, carefully. And he says, uh, just says, thankfully, with your intervention, they have not sustained any permanent damage. In time, as I recover, I too can help them recover to be one with the monolith again. It seems whatever ritual that was undertaken can be undone and any energies that were siphoned off be returned. What can be done with um, all that energy? that's been gathered and stolen well if one can take one can return hmm. i shall do what i must as the keeper current keeper of this place and return the energies that have been taken hopefully in time they will recover and restabilize That is a, I fear that is a long process, but do not worry. Besides, I feel that your, I feel for small folks such as yourselves, you do not have the longevity required for this task. Okay. Um, I'll go while we're um, uh, while we're uh, yeah. here, while we are here, um, we would like to request uh, for 
a place to rest and safe passage if that may be allowed under your permission. Of course, of course. Oh, yes. are they good, Shira? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. As, savers, as the savers of this or... enclave, as the savers of this enclave, it is the okay. least I could do. The least I could do. And I, and if you are willing, and if you have some time to spare, perhaps I can lead the five of you, the six of you, to dream walk with me, and that perhaps that may unlock some understanding of the future. It well, seems she... like a fun adventure that will give us more information. Malak looks at. <laughs> Asomedas in his trouser. Looks at Shira again. Uh, does he need healing? Seems like it. Yeah, ask. You were asking if he needs healing. Um, do you need any healing? Additional. Well, yeah, additional healing. If you can, if you can spare some more, then I would not be opposed to it. Well, if we're going to be resting, then I'm going to cast Lay of Hands on him and give him 25 points. Oh. Maybe that's enough to get him back up and moving. Who else needs healing? In um, case. Me. Me. I hear evil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I give him a, I give yeah, him the last I give him twenty. Ah, that's the ticket. <laughs> twenty. Okay. No dead. You know you know, for the only guy you know for the guy with the crossbow, they sure know how to pick their targets. Well Stupid it, it, it was the yeah, it was the teleporting thing that fucked us up. <laughs> well, well well, Fucked you up. I mean, because well, <laughs> I was barely scratched off. Yeah, yeah. You know, big thick head like you couldn't even lift you through the teleport. So maybe that's why. <laughs> Some things are helpful. Yeah, well, you know, the clock strikes. Uh, <laughs> the clock rings true. A broken clock rings true at least twice a day. Oh, as long as you're still alive. Let's go, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and we will just hurt stuff and just like sits down and he's he just like, it's not graceful at all. Like he just sits down and goes like, huh. like clearly tired from all the running, <laughs> from the being attacked, and you know the stress of being surrounded by enemies and you know a literal giant skeleton breathing, uh, you know, bearing down on him a great axe and whatnot. But yeah, um. It is enough to get Roland up on his feet, but you notice that uh, even though, even so, um, he's since he's quite old already. Like when you say get up, it's not really like it's not even like much. Like he's able to move around, but um, yeah, it's a bit slower. I mean, it's at your pace, but for a giant, it's rather it's a bit slower. Um, at this point, Harshnog was able to return, and you see him, you know, applying um, bandages on Roland. And after that, Roland actually um, guides you to the side, because like it, it was like a ring, it was the ring, right? And then the ring's on top of a hill. Um, the hill is actually big enough that as you turn into one of the sections, you see a great uh, wooden door. And as you open it, reveals a very cozy. Well, it's a it's a room, and at the touch of um, Roland's hand and one of like the um, torches, uh, the whole place is illuminated. First of all, and secondly, it's also bathed in warmth, a very welcome sensation after all those days of trudging through the snow and fighting the cold necrotic energies. Um, and yeah, it's a very cozy room actually. Uh, 
for it would fit two stone giants, but it is very much well equipped to accommodate the five of you who are non giants. Cool. Get to rest. Yeah, Roland actually looks at you, Shiva, and says, While I offer the uh, Dreamwalker, while I offer for the rest of you to Dreamwalk. I am not sure how that will affect non members that are not us. And, and while I'm sure you can discover the great mysteries of the multiverse, uh, it is best to come to, ex to be ready and expect the unexpected. I do not know how your body can handle it uh, our meditation a uh, week a simple dream walk shall take no less than three days and in that time like in all customs I am he starts the doubt starts creeping into his mind into his face if you can handle it um, one must rid themselves of any bodily needs. So, if you can handle without drinking or eating for at least three days and open yourself to the multiverse, I hope some truths may be revealed to you. Again. This is an open invitation. Well, he looks at the six of you and says, Rest easy, dream walkers. Is, is he speaking in common, about? No, he assumed uh, that. He assumed that since all the conversations are in giant, you all speak giant. <laughs> Yeah, I just relay, I relay it to everyone else. Uh, what, 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 dream? Else. What, what, what's going to happen, Shiva? Dream walk. <laughs> can um, you let him know we don't speak, Giant? <laughs> uh, can he speak so, in common? Can you speak in common? So, Roland, do you, uh, as a favor, do you speak in common? The common tongue? For those here that have not learned yet uh, the the language. I uh, comma this common. I speak some. Not a lot, but maybe enough. We'll take it. So what's gonna happen? I ask your friend if okay to meditate, but no food, no water, like all meditations. Uh, basically, three, he, three <laughs> no, days. So, yes, right, Shiva. Yeah, um, basically, he invited us to, um, the to dream walk with him, which which involves which to prepare. We need to go three days. Why food Why do we need to dream walk for water? Um, it will give us a. It will give us a let us enter the what is it called the. I ask the dream pl plane of dreams. And do we all have to do it? It's an open invitation. It's not required. Because um, who's who's gonna watch your body? So while all of your, well, all of us are in somewhere else. We will. I guess. <laughs> I guess the advantage we get is that we get to see glances of a possible future, possible glances of the future. 
which might give an advantage. It's up to you guys, really, um, if you consider this a safe enough place to consign your bodies to. What do you think, guys? Horns? Something we're gonna do? I don't, I don't think all of us have to do it. But I think dreamwalking reveals something different for each one of us. Yeah. Oh, that's a good Taking thing. it all. Taking it away from a losing this chance might I don't know when it will come back again. Yeah. How about Harshnag? Would you like to join the dream walk? Harshnag just goes, Well, if you're worried about if you're worried about safety, maybe I can set this one out, you know. Make sure at least five of you don't get attacked. Besides. I agree with Malak. It's almost irresponsible leaving for to leaving bodies unattended. Yeah, well, I'll definitely sleep soundly knowing big guys watching us. Yeah, but not tonight. I need to get some rest tonight. Well, let's all yeah, let's all get some well, rest. We need to before. wait for three days anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right then. Rest is our order of business. Okay. Rest so yeah, you... water for three days, right? No, you can start tomorrow. So okay. Okay. we have so a long rest. Cover today. We feast today. <laughs> <laughs> feast on rations. Still, still have our watches, but yeah. Do you do you do, you do your what? Do you do your thing inside the room or do you do it outside? How how far is it, right? It's, it's down big... the hill. It's down the hill. Uh, like, remember the map? Remember the map? Like, uh -huh. you're basically you're at the bottom, but there's two rings. You're at the bottom ring. Because that, rep that represents the hill. Eh? As I long as I'm within he... earshot. Okay, yeah. You there's no point to, yeah, watching and then being too far. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so I assume it's the same, like watch schedule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, before we do take a rest, I'm just a little worried about our defeated foe. I know Malak here has trimmed its toenails and given it a nice pedicure. <laughs> oh, but. Is there a possible way? I mean, I'm thinking he's full of necromantic energy. Couldn't Off he wood. like Could be burning? Or she like Off with her head? <laughs> I'm not sure. Can we start a fire somewhere here? <laughs> For something that big? Remake? Um, mm -hmm. do you, do you, Rup, do you include Roland in this conversation or is this just amongst you? Oh, we can ask. I, I, I ask, he'd, he'd I more. ask about the body. Um, as this is a body of someone who was, um, who could manipulate through necro necromancy, uh, should we, should we be worried about it, it essentially coming back in any way. Or how can Roland... we ensure that it won't come back in any way? Yeah, at this point, Roland just look, looks looks in the direction of the body and turns to you, his expression colder, and speaks in giant. Like all stone, stones are capable of crushing and burying and this shall be no different from any other stone. Yeah, I mean, let's start crushing and burning. Is that a yes or a no? I shall handle this. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All he had to say. So yeah, um, yeah, I'd say during your watch, um, I will give the complete picture, but during your watch, you just get snippets of this, um, what is happening in the camp, uh, in the, in the camp, in the, uh, in the cavern. Um, Roland essentially takes the bodies and haphazardly just puts them in a neat pile and starts casting some spells and the earth itself beneath them starts to sink and there is this crunching sound as this earth just crushes and pulverizes whatever is there and after a couple of hours um roland waves his hands and waves his hands and starts doing a very graceful like it's very graceful especially for one that is perceived to be as old as he is and after this graceful dance of his it seems he starts to glide through the earth and you see, feel um you who feel the uh, earth beneath him start moving as he does as he swiftly moves around the whole encampment, the whole um, cavern. And after he is done dealing with the bodies, he returns to the top of the hill. And starts taking um, a large like uh, rock and carefully pounds the earth on top of the uh, on top of the uh, the hill to those who are asleep at this point it is just a rhythmic humming that actually helps you that helps lull you into sleep <laughs> and he just continues pulverizing the dirt again and again and again until um at this i guess at the last part you the stone has the lo the earth has been loosened enough that it starts to form like a fine sand and once everyone has awoken after taking their long rests, um, you all all greeted with the whole the whole um, at the center of all the monoliths. It, the earth has been pulverized enough that it looks like a fine sand has. It has been filled with fine sand, and the sand has been um, uh, there are like you know patterns all across the sand. And there are these like stepping stones in which you can criss cross through the large area, but for the most part, it is just fine sand and with the patterns on it. Um, but before meeting with Roldan, have all of you decided if you want to undertake this, you know, meditation? I definitely will. Want to learn Amen. more. I discussed okay, it with okay. Valandras. But if he, what does he think? Valandras just says, no matter what age you are, you still need all the wisdom you can get, especially so from you, for you. You mean it's going to be more helpful than you? <laughs> Ooh. Well, if that's what's it, that if that's what it takes for you to listen to someone, then maybe. Okay, okay, just kidding. Fine. Is that what you think? I, I'm not a fan of it, but I guess you can lose it. Hopefully, it won't lose us anything. So we we do the okay. long rest, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the long rest is done. So the long rest is done. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so you. 
So as you go up the hill, you see Roland sitting. Well, first of all, you see the mono, the the energy, the vibe of this place is entirely different. Uh, with the undead gone and the necrotic energy is, um, you know, uh, mm. siphoned away to a different place. Uh, you don't notice the staff anymore, and the ano, uh, um, and the body is. Uh, the there's a serene huh? calmness that yeah, goes over you. And you see, uh, you see the four monoliths and the five monoliths, and you just see, uh, it's un- unfortunately huh? the one reminder of the battle is the two stone giants that are protruding from the obelisks. Enough? But you see, rolling at the center, oh. um, with what looks to be a bowl of incense. And he's just sitting cross-legged and he's drawing patterns in the sand. We're going. And then after he's done, he's gonna remove it and it'll start repeating it again. Along and uh and he's just gonna continue that until you call his attention. <laughs> huh? My meeting was at seven thirty. Hello. Oh. Eh. So who gets his attention? Okay, come in look now. Really really we were again or as a those best talkers. 345 on Gusunya. 55 just missed. I pick up 345. Can we even speak? It's 430. Uh, so I, I just go up. Um, good morning. Ah, uh, yes. I hope the accommodations is to your liking. Uh, yes, yeah, we were very thankful. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I am thankful. As huh? I would not be here hmm. if it was not for your intervention. Come, have you decided to partake in this meditation? Um, yes, us four are going. Five to... people's gonna join. Uh, oh, <laughs> we we will. Okay. Yes. Five. Us five are going to partake. Yes, yes, very well. Like, even if you are dreamwalkers already, it would not hurt, but perhaps you can see some truth in your own world. Now, come along. And he asks you to basically, um, just like, basically lie down. And as you lie down, he says some words. He starts chanting a low uh low rhythmic chant and with the incense and all the uh with the incense it you can't help but you know be lifted elsewhere and as you lie down you look up actually and you see once again the twinkling domed ceiling above you small dots infinite number of dots that don't really at at first glance don't really form anything but the more each of you look at it the more you feel like you can start making sort of some semblance of shapes and patterns and you know figures even At this point, um, Roland starts speaking again uh, in Giant. Um, I'd say Itsuki and Itsuki and uh, Shivra, you would get the full context. But for Asomedus Malak and Weevil, like he speaks, he has this low voice that it is it, that it's enough to get you into like the meditative state. Um, I have my sword in me. I just turned off, just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he basically says, "Let yourself drift away and gaze upon the infinite possibilities of the beyond. Each point in the dark." Up close, seemingly alone. But when one has the grasp of everything, 
are all connected to each other. A small stone rippling into an avalanche. A bird call leading a hurricane into the forest. Everything connected. Everything a cause. Everything an effect. And as he says that, the well, again the the twinkling uh, gemstones uh, almost look like stars even. Uh, they all start looking like. They all start, you know, again forming images. And each of these images are unique to each of you. So, going around the table, basically, at this point, what does, what do each of your characters like want? Um. So yeah, let's go alphabetical. So Asumedos, let's start with you. Medos wants more ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Or yeah, like if anyone has I don't know, anyone has something that they have, we can start there. Mm, so yeah, no like right now, yeah. Mine's most simplest. I just want more power, baby. Like, do you want more power? Do you want? Is it more like when you picture it, when you when you when you like manifest that you want more power? And again, the images, the dots start forming into images and whatnot. Mm. Does it look like it's key being strong and being victorious? Or is it looking like it's key? Uh, it's, does it look like your enemies being defeated by it's key? Exactly. It's, it's not most, it's definitely not like physical power, but it's, uh, it comes in the form of, you know, uh, leading a lot of resources you know maybe uh stronger people around me more gold you know a lot of those things okay. that, I, that can kind of like supersede uh you know what we perceive as our kind of like biggest foe which is this kind of you know you know the sister and the hordes that they they've kind of uh, uh okay together to uh okay but, so so like so with all that, it seems like it, it's key, it's key is powerful because of self improvement, not necessarily because the enemies are weaker. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So it's a I am powerful because of me, not because you are weak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay, just, okay. I, mean, I mean, I also understand it might I might not be the strongest physically, but you know, in terms of skill, in terms of you know, um, leading the group. You know, that's what I'm like imagining becoming like more of like a leader for for. Okay. Okay, and yeah, again, so with these thoughts in Itsuki's head, like, what do the what does the image look like? What do the dots? How do the dots connect? How does the it dots the connect? It's like me in front of a long table with maps and golds, delegating different tasks to different powerful warlords and generals and leaders and teammates and then sometimes like me getting my hands dirty a little bit but more of like making sure that i am a little bit more into the background so that's what i'm thinking it's like more like longer and longer table like an obscenely long table with generals and gold dripping all over is what i imagine this this dream state to be Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's key for the next three days, basically. Thoughts of, you know, uh, being a leader, delegating and all that. Uh, fill your mind. And your mind wanders. And your minds are filled with 
similar mythological figures in folklore, the great dwarven lords, the dwarven king who heralded the unification of the dwarven clans, for example. Or perhaps in a more insidious manner, but nonetheless still great, the greatest of all devils, uh, Asmodeus, being cunning and making sure that all of the nine layers bow to him. And even if it is not here physically, his influence is still felt throughout the whole multiverse. Hmm. And, you know, all these images swirl inside your head. And for the next, again, for the next three days, that is what fills you. Uh, yeah, who's next? Who's ready? Asimatus will start to picture the forest. I'll see tall grass, le uh, trees, and at the end, like a house that that looks so familiar. So as I walk down the grassy area, my hands touching the tips of the blades of grass, walking towards, and I see a familiar figure. A face of a woman that's so familiar that I haven't seen for quite some time. A face of someone that I have not seen and um, almost forgotten how she actually looks like. But as I walk closer, it starts to form clearer and clearer. It was, it was my wife smile on her face preparing dinner and I'm just trying to go back okay so yeah um, the familiar smells and sights of home uh, fill your mind and consume you uh, the coziness the warmth the simpler times basically right happier times and the image never changes always the same the little dots start forming as you look and gaze above um, to the image of your uh, wife and that is the only image that appears in front of you for you yearn for nothing else but to succeed and succeed to a venture or to so is it like do you want to how do you want to succeed to win over uh, to you know vanquish your enemies to gain revenge or to like um, you know to be able to enter a state of you being ready to let go like, as of this moment, what is... Is it still more of the vengeance angle? Or, like, the it's more letting of, go of the past? Yeah. It's more of um, being able to face her again, meaning I've done my job. Yeah, and the job is to... The job is, like, the vengeance angle. <laughs> the vengeance angle. Okay, okay. Like, after that, I'm done. I can face her again. But until then, I can't die. Okay. And, yeah. Um, while the image does remain the same, images in your head, the classic tale of a hero being defeated at first, his loved ones lo lost, and the never-ending, ever-repeating tale from many a bard of, you know, gaining revenge, avenging them, um, making sure that whoever did this went to justice. You know, all the, it's a classic tale. And all those tales keep repeating in your head as you commune with the, you, as you commune with the world for the next three days. Okay. 
uh, Shivra yeah. or Malak. I can go next. Okay. So so just Malak is just a simple ano lang. Uh, it's like a, he's on top of a mound of corpses, and most of the corpses <laughs> are like a, a Zathi. Um, Who's Zathi? Uh, uh, it's his sister. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, bad guy. So Zati, uh, some of the uh, some unidentified humanoid creatures with the symbol of the cult again of of Asomedos. Uh, many uh, giants littering also. So it's like uh, he's trying to. Well, his goal is trying to rid the world of, huh. world of evil, but since. He's kind of in denial. He doesn't want to focus hmm. on the one that wronged him. So he's putting the other faces of of the, the party's enemies instead. So and then so that's that. But as he's like he's sitting down on top of the mound, a Thanos style after Infinity War. Like tired but satisfied. But suddenly like bursts of images of uh Scylla, the the red haired woman that betrayed him is yeah, yeah. like Pumping out, uh, like disturbing him a little bit, and so it's like he's still not at peace in the yeah, end. Yeah, so, um, so something like that. Yeah, the the dot, the little dots form again to the image that you want it to form by your sheer, you know, will of force, your charisma. You're able to at first focus on that, but as the days come by, again, as food and water being denied to you, that image crumbles. To, you know, what truly started this all, the face of your first betrayer, the face of anger and betrayal that made you swear vengeance on anything that could hurt anyone. And to most, it would seem too great a goal, but to you, it was a very convenient escape to your own pains in your own journey. And for a while, the images of the image of, again, you standing atop, victorious over the mounds of corpses, is sustained. Once it switches over to the face of your first betrayer, it does not shift, it does not alter. And she looks at you. The image in the domed sky, the domed ceiling, looks at you. And there is a swelling of anger as... You can't help but interpret the, the the you know the dotted image as you know this face even smirking at you, and you rest for that for the next couple of days, and again, unlike the others who have you know grand stories, of you know similar stories being repeated over and over. Your tale is just a memory that keeps looping from the bliss and enjoyment from your own childhood to that high, to the high, that high, that safety, the comfort of your mentor in the village to uh, the very much different and totally opposite feeling of you know insecurity and anger and the world you know crushing down on you as this woman has literally uh, turned the world against you and yeah you that simmers in your head Again, very consistent with what you want, that vengeance. And yeah, hopefully in this journey, not you may not only avenge those who have been wronged, but maybe you might avenge the wrong that was done in your life. And yeah, Shiva. What does Shiva see? Or yeah, what does Shiva want? The, she... the question that comes to her initially is uh who am I and what should I want? 
and should I be wanting what other people want for me? Um, her whole life she's been raised to fill in a role and perform a ro perform in her life has been a play of entertainment of entertaining others uh, using her skills to to gain renown not for herself but for her family she remembers her mother's lashings of harsh words and the the silent hallways af after her uh, bouts of scoldings. She remembers her father, kind, but distant and unable to reach her. She remembers her siblings, always so rowdy and never looking at her as the same level. She was always just the little sister. And she sees all this and wonders, so who am I and what's the point of me being here? What's the point of me continuing to exist if nobody recognizes what I do or what I say? Um, these people around me they say they care about me, but do they really? Or are they just meant to care for me? Because they're obligated to. They might love me, but do they like me? Does anyone truly like me? She's gone on in life to have met two people that she thought really liked her. One in her dojo. And that went, uh, that went down in flames, almost literally. Uh, so that taught her that love was something you were meant to fear. Her second encounter with someone who affirmed her as someone worthy was with someone she lost. So she learned that love was meant was something meant to be lost. So now she's afraid of opening herself up to others. She needs kindness. She needs patience. But she doesn't think she deserves any of that from anyone. And it appears like at this time, she'll never find the connection that will make her feel whole. This, these questions swirl in your head, the loss and the betrayal. And as you look up, again, uh, beneath the infinite amount, seemingly infinite amount of glittering points, your mind, your eyes wander to the dark between the points. And as you concentrate on the darkness, it seems all points, all the other glittering, no matter how much they glitter, it all disappears as you lose focus. And this happens for a while as you dwell in these thoughts. Until one point, one singular point appears. And after that, a couple of more. The others are still dim. But right now, as you study you know, as her mind races and all that. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps these, perhaps at one point could be you. And perhaps 
points, these other points, or the people you've met along your journey. It does cross your mind of, at least to your family, if they love you out of a sense of obligation, as it is expected for you to keep up appearances and, you know, to keep up the tradition of a balanced family and all the advantages and the baggages that has, that has. But your mind dwells onto the relationships that you have garnered since the start of your journey. On the relationships that started out with the flimsiest of reasons. Of the point for now being you are accompanying uh, for uh, well, currently six individuals who may you may not have a lot in common with, who may initially do not share the you know personality that you would want your friends to have, maybe. But it has brought you some peace. And your and maybe that small cluster of, you know, glittering gemstones. It is enough for you, perhaps. And you know, after the cup after these couple of days of, you know, feeling dejected and empty and all that, you are left with a little sliver of hope. And as all of this is happening for the next three days, um, I would want everyone to make me a constitution saving throw. God, are we all 10 feet? I'd say, yeah. Okay, so plus three, everybody. Plus three? Mm -hmm. Do I have advantage? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Nine plus two plus three. Fourteen. Six. Ooh, three. Atsumedos rolled low. I only got three plus four plus three. So ten. Okay. Uh, Shivra? Seven. Ma Malak? Twenty three. Uh, it's key. 14. 14. Okay. For Weevil, he, on my D20, he rolled a 12. Okay. Plus 3. So, so 15 plus 1, yata, or 2? Plus 1. Yung con okay. save. Yeah. Okay. So, 16. It is a very unusual feeling. You feel sustained, but clearly you are not, as you have not eaten or dr you know, consumed anything for the past three days. But as your minds gaze and wander and are lost upon, uh, you know, the infinite possibilities, you seem content. And for the first time in a while, you seem at peace, detached from the hectic world of, you know, violence and adventure and after these three days you suddenly awaken and you feel as if you have a certainty of what could happen in front of you so it's key and shivra Roll me a d20 at advantage. Okay. Ma Malak and Asumedos, roll me a d20 at disadvantage. No. <laughs> Why? Okay. Oh. It's a 10 and a 3. I got a 2. Okay. You got an 11 at the disadvantage. 14. You got a 15 okay. and 11. Okay. So remember those numbers. You may keep those D20s. 
whenever a d20 is used that you can see you may replace that value <laughs> With you the may two. use it on you may use it on yourself or you may use it on someone else Oh, so if they if they hit me with a crit or something. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. If you have to declare it before anything happens. Oh, uh, damn it. So, for example, if you want them to fail a saving throw, you can just say, "He rolled a two. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I think Shiver, you got a eleven, a ten, right? Uh, yeah, ten. Yeah, that is the most versatile one. So, like, it's up to <laughs> you how. It's up to you. Like, it could fail, it could succeed. You don't know which. I, I mean, funny enough, it really matches your emotional state right now. Why so, was Malak with disadvantage, if I may ask? Huh? Because you'd prefer to see your enemies lose. Gotcha, gotcha. And it was perfect. For actually, for Acevedos, it's really, it kind of matches too. Why? Why is that? Like, you want your enemies to lose, but deep down, you just want to be at peace. <laughs> so even <laughs> if you roll a disadvantage, you gotta, like, okay ish number. <laughs> yeah. What did you get, Itsuki? I got a 14. Okay, so Shut yeah, it it match it matches it matches. Like you could use it for yeah, it's a it's a good enough number for you to for actually any decent bo any decent bonus. So this does not replace the final dice, ha. Huh? This only replaces the d twenty. So we still add bonuses or this or okay. penalties. So it's key if you use the fourteen for an attack, you still add your nine. Mm -hmm. So that's only for saving throws or for any no, D, like any, attack rolls? Any D20. So, so if okay, an okay. enemy attacks me, I can say you rolled an 11. But then I don't yeah. know how much they're... Yeah. So, okay, mechanic of officially, it's any attack, attack roll, ability check, saving throw. Yeah, that's all the D20s. Okay. This is okay. Uh, sorry, yeah. Let's stick with attack roll, ability check, saving throw. Attack so, roll. Because sometimes, yeah. Because sometimes I'll let you roll d twenty for like luck, eh? Like if this happens yeah. or not. Ability. So that's not. That's not. That does not happen. That <laughs> you don't. You can't use that for that. And saving throws. Saving throws and what? Sorry, attack rolls, saving throws, and ability, ability checks. Check. So Malak, so I can... as soon as he wakes up, he's a oh. little more grumpy. Ah, okay. So skill checks, how's that? Yes, no, ability check, skill check. Yeah, that's ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's ability Like, check. for example, yeah. I want to do stealth. I'll force myself an 11 plus my modifiers. Yes, yes. Or like, or like you want a conversation to go well because you know you have a high bonus. So you can just First say, oh, station. I rolled an 11. I rolled an 11 plus 8. So I'm a 19 automatically. Something like, yeah. yeah. That's one example. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So yeah. You all, you all, you know, meditate and be one with the universe, multiverse. And these are the little, you know, possibilities that you are certain could happen at some point in the future if you so choose to press it. You all wake up. Asumedos. Um, you all wake up with that contentness lingering on you. Except for Asumedos, who immediately feels the pangs of hunger mm -hmm. and thirst. Uh, for everyone else, you feel... It, 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 it takes a while, but since you are not used to this lifestyle, the sensation of, you know, one having to eat, having to drink does settle in. But Roland looks at you. Um, Roland looks at you all contently. Um, he tries to stay in Cobo and he just says, okay, <laughs> since he can't really, he's not really that used to the vocabulary. But yeah, he just, he asks in Cobo, okay? Yeah, okay. 
Doing okay. okay. Just, just, uh, you know, a little hungry. Mm. Uh, well, he switch. Uh, 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 grumps. Yeah. After grumps that, he he sw- he switches to he switches to giant now because like he can't. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. he, he goes. Well, it is good that you have gazed upon uh, infinite possibilities. Each each of us may interpret that differently, or perhaps may have no interpretation. But still. Perhaps you have learned something. Now, if everyone is willing, uh, if everyone is ready, uh, I may escort you out of the Enclave. Uh, But I fear for the safety of the Enclave for now. As soon as you leave, I must seal up the enclave as we are recovering we are still recovering from what has happened so yeah um, you still have your long rest Uh, you are full with supplies Uh, we are full with um, you know, all your spell slots and whatnot, and you are ready with whatever supplies you had. And yeah, at this point, what does the party do? Yeah, we follow off outside. Okay. And as you are walking, you're taking a different path. And at this point, uh, uh, Roland just goes, Harshnag has told me that you are looking for the Eye of the Allfather. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Be wary. It is a very dangerous path ahead. For What, What might we expect? Those who dwell in the upper mountains or dangerous creatures Ooh. like Remoraz, Yetis, perhaps even other giants, or even the occasional white dragon that prefers their lair as high and in the cold. Wait, where are we going again? The what do you call All Father or something? I have the All Father. Yeah, that's the, the name All of Father. the place. Yeah. And what yeah. are we seeking? What what's there? Uh basically, answers to the can, uh, yeah. Okay, answers can, to the hope, There is yeah, there's an oracle there and then hopefully you can you know ascertain what's happening. <laughs> but that's not the Storm King's court. No. Do we know where it, that is? Uh, you know, uh, the current Storm King. Do you know that the current Storm King is called Hecaton? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Storm King's court is in their stronghold, the Maelstrom. Mm-hmm. And current, the one overseeing it currently is Hecaton's youngest daughter. Serissa. How do you spell that? S S E, yeah R R, I S A. So Hecaton is missing. Yes. Now, is he missing because of the disruption of the ordining? Or is his missing what caused the disruption of the ordining? Okay. <laughs> we will figure that out. <laughs> okay. And then as you're being led out, uh, roll in continues. Keep rolling on. So- <laughs> Oh, I'm stuck on it in my mind. 
Right. <laughs> uh, oh, I think RJ's stuck. <laughs> Unless he really likes that coffee. <laughs> proud. It's very nice. I'm, I'm basa ko proud D R G Y or proud O R G Y. <laughs> Does it say barangay? Barangay. So yeah, uh, Roland continue. Uh, Roland continues. Uh, it says, "I fear." This traitor is just a symptom of a deeper crisis within the stone giants. If I remember our myths correctly, there was a stone giant that ascended into Lichdom. Perhaps that is what is causing all this trouble. Stone giant? Tell me, have you come across anything connected to stone giants in your journey thus far? I ask everyone yeah. else if they can recall. <laughs> we have, right? Stone giants? No, no, we've gone hell. Uh, is we've it the symbols hell. of the, the giant mask? Cloud. Oh, yeah. The. Wait. Well, in Where the tribal there? things, we've seen symbols, uh, necromatic symbols of something. The ones with the griffins? Are they stone yeah. giants? Yeah. I don't know yeah. if it's stone giants, but there were symbols and masks, right? Uh, there, was, yeah. there was a giant mask. I uh, know the the sorry the symbol of the rock or the rock matched the one similar to the symbol you found behind the gravestone of the chieftain of the Griffon tribe. Okay, explain that to him. Yeah. Okay. Roland ponders on this a little bit. And the finest just then they are seeking out gathering energy to <coughs> or to whatever their end is and are collecting the life essences of those who have gone by if a stone giant has reaped the energies from a mass grave it would be very dire news indeed if they did this on tell me in your culture does are there more than one tribe or do different tribes have their own mass graves um i think we bury we bury separately Right. It depends on the race, on the people, on yeah, the town, on the, on the location. There's a lot, there's lots of different kinds of people. If there is an unusually unusual amount of, uh, if there is a large enough amount of graves that are unprotected, it would be easy enough for the followers of this. Lich stone giant to harvest. Yes, it is good that you are going to the eye of the All Father. Perhaps your questions will be answered there. But it is good that you have at least stopped the reaping of this one. And as he guides you through the tunnels, um, he turns he turns quiet for the rest of the journey as he ponders on this new information that you have shared to him. And as you continue higher and higher 
to uh, the uh, mouth of the cave. Once again, the cold starts creeping up on you. So much so that um, I would have asked for a con save, but since you are wearing the gear, no need yet. And you exit in actually a different place, a higher place. Roland explains that this will take you closer to the mount to the eye of the All Father. But be wary. The cold is unforgiving. The very land itself is unforgiving. We've got a giant blanket. And then I <laughs> snuggle next to Shivra. <laughs> Should be fine. We got our cold gear. Yeah. Roland gives one final polite nod as he uh, turns back. Oh, and then what do we do with the stone before I forget? And before we leave. Wait, sorry, the what green, stone? The green stone on top of the staff. Oh, I thought like I thought you allowed him to get it. Because he's gonna like oh, okay. return the yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. We, we did. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he'll return the energy to the other stone giants in the sleeping in the monoliths. Um oh. but yeah. As he turns away, uh, uh at some point Harshna goes like Well, how how did go how did it go? Very well. Well, it's uh, the best three days I've had in a long time. Oh, well, on my end, on my end, nothing <laughs> happened, which arguably is the same thing. So. <laughs> nothing more than the usual dreams. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, at that point, you, you, you hear a rumbling deeper inside the cave, and you see uh, rocks start closing in, which, again, would um, uh, indicate... Yeah, which, again, he said that he would be sealing up the place as they tried to recover what has, has happened. And, yeah, you continue your journey on. And once again, you are greeted by the immense blinding snow and again, as you are higher in the no, as you are higher in the mountains, the snow does uh, the snow increased ever more, and temperature has decreased even more. Um, and at this point, without ample warmth, you cannot recover from exhaustion. But we're not disadvantaged; just can't recover. If we get if exhausted, we, if we get exhausted, I'm sorry. God, yes. yes. Let's not get um, exhausted, guys. Ample warmth. <laughs> ample warmth. I will say if it's ample warmth. Like your your cute little your cute your cute little campfire is not enough. It's not ample. <laughs> but yes, uh it's key. Please roll me a survival check. Uh straight <laughs> roll, since you have this at this point you have disadvantage, but harsh not helping you, so flat roll. Okay. We're looking for. What are we looking for? Uh survival. 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 Plus six. Ooh, nice. Seventeen plus six, twenty-three. Okay. You will uh, survive. Yeah, you start plotting out a trek across the mountainside. Uh, with Harshnug's instructions, you're able to. You and Harshnug are able to plot out a trek, and as you move forward, and at this temperature. It's a rather lonely journey as you don't see anything and you, it's really hard to speak. So you all make your journey in quiet and in uh, quiet and in um, solitude for the most part. Um, at some point, you come across what looks to be like a large and a, a large wide frozen river um 
and I will say that the party is successful in crossing over. But please describe to me how the party was successful in crossing over. <laughs> we what lock arm arm in arm to cross properly <laughs> through the glacial wings. So yeah, so you are on top. You are basically gliding through this like um this frozen river. We'll and use rope. I guess rope tie each other. Just be sure. Tie each other. Yeah. Okay. But like what is like are you all on like you what do you mean like you lock arms and walk? So you basically just lock arms and walk? And slide through together. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> we just go like uh give it a little momentum and then just like hop on so we can just like slide forward. <laughs> Okay, okay. Slip and, a little uh, bit, but it's fine because the, I'm assuming that the frozen body of water lake or something is is strong enough to carry all of our our weight. Yeah. Um. For obvious reasons, Harshnag will Harsh, be. Will Harshnag be, is will the not, one. That, yeah. Harshnag will no, be no, no. kind of pushes us. He'll, he's he's gonna do the initial push, mm. but like he will not start crossing until we're all done. The rest we all done. Yeah. But I will say, since you're, you said it, it's key. I will say that you're actually the one. The river isn't exactly solid throughout, so I'd say with your high passive perception, you're able to spot the air, the you know, zones in which the ice could be a little bit thinner. So you safely stop and navigate the rest of the party to come across. Yeah. Um. It takes you about like 30 minutes to fully get across due to the wind, through the difficulties of communication. Um, you really have to resort to using your hand signs to communicate. But yeah, after this, you know, um, law, this, you know, um, tumultuous, you know, area, you're able to safely make it through. And Thankfully, harsh tags and things were right because one one foot in, I started broken, but <laughs> he does not feel the cold anyway, so he just he just breaks the ice and just walks through, and it takes an additional thirty minutes for harsh Nag to dry up. Um, but yes, you are able to travel throughout. Um, and yeah, um, as you are able to travel through, uh, night comes and darkness grows once again it's key you sound the signal to the as you're able to stop and rest for the night and you all take your watches now does anything happen during this night or are you all focused on yeah I'll, over I'll... the campfire yeah. I'll, I'll ask like so how is the dream walk for you guys <laughs> if you don't mind sharing yeah. mine give me a, a good image of what will and should happen uh, in the near future once we kind of tackle all of these challenges before us is it you swimming in a pool full of gold and platinum yeah you know what that's, that's not too far off Mm. Uh, that's not too far off. Lots of gold, lots of resources, lots of lots of uh, hopefully allies and assistance, so that we could figure out what's the bottom of all of these troubles. Sounds pretty much like you. But you know what? It wouldn't be bad being friends or allies with someone with that much money. Yeah, true. How about you, Blueberry? I just grunt. Yes, Malak. That's you. <laughs> Malak just grunts. Not uh, happy about it. Don't really talk about it. Yeah. But does he say that? Or like that's all expressed in a grunt? It's just the grunt. Uh, okay. Hey, somebody woke up on the wrong side of the bed, apparently. <gasps> How about you, Shiva? Uh, just the usual, you know. Family. Uh, I mean, I saw you guys kind of like briefly. Oh. 
That's good. Well, at least I got to see what life would be like once I'm done. Whatever it was, it was a, it was a good dream. Part of me didn't want to wake up. But there's a lot of work to do. But then it makes me wonder, with all the magic in the world, with all the planes in, in all its existence, I wonder there would ever be a chance to meet with people we've lost in the past. Wouldn't it be nice to have a toast with Silvarin once again? I hope we're not talking about necromancy. No, far from it. <laughs> far from it. Far from it. As you saw, that stone giant using necromancy, bringing back the dead, is not the same as bringing back the person you lost. Sure. I could make corpses dance myself, but it's far from having the actual person come back to life. Are you talking about time travel? Don't think we've, uh, you know, I want to be powerful, but I don't think I can be that powerful. Hey, time travel is always an easy way out of what we've done, right? But we can't. It's a matter of, it's just, you know, it's just something for thought. It's something that made me think. Is there, out of the many realities out there, out of the many planes of existence, is there a plane where all our departed are there? And we can see them, join them, or even bring them back. But anyway, I'm just rambling. It's probably late. but we all can't die until we reach our goals you guys know that right because if we die early no one's going to fulfill that goal for us so every dream you've ever thought of all the gold and platinum that you've achieved all the people that you would have I would assume for Malak right here is to defeat as many evil people as possible would not be defeated if we die early. And for Shivra, she's very silent, but I assume it's something to do with achievements. So all the achievements that we want to achieve will not come to pass if we die. So you got to work harder. You got to get stronger. You got to finish what we set off to do. I mean, who would have thought us Heroes trying to end the ordering. <laughs> if you had told me this three months ago, I'd probably be laughing in your face. And yet here we are. Still not knowing what we're really doing. <laughs> we will figure it out. That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, at that point, Harshna, actually, Harshna actually adds to that and says, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Adventuring is just taking one step in front of the other until eventually you find out looking behind you the corpses of your enemies and apparently a world you've just saved. So you're not too wrong. Oh. Thanks for that, big guy. Whatever it is that you set out to do, all the regrets you've had, we can't pay them back unless we do our part. Oh. I'm going to hit the bedroll. See you guys in the morning. Mm.
Have a good night, everyone. So yeah, I will say at this point, your watches go by uneventful. But you wake up, as Meadows, when you wake up, you wake up in a cold sweat. Your body, as you wake up, is writhing in pain and fatigue. And it seems mm -hmm. that the lingering effects of the, uh, the lingering effects of the dream walking has finally caught up to you. And after one day, you have re- uh, you have one level of exhaustion. What? Okay. <laughs> no, I wrote lower in my con save. That, yeah, that was the con save. Oh, okay. Just, just as a medos. Yes, as a medos. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, oh, yeah, that was the con save. That was the that was the con save. Like your bodies were so in tune that it's it's a delayed reaction. So yeah. And your travel continues on. Traveling again. More or less the same thing. The cold temperatures. The howling winds. The blinding snow. Occasionally, you come across a carcass. The skeletal remains of, you know, prey. Large creatures are left behind, which was either perhaps much more vicious or perhaps much larger. At this point, you have no way of telling. But either way, you continue on on dangerous territory. Until Itsuki and Malak, you hear the rumblings once again from higher above you. And once mm -hmm. again, you recognize an avalanche coming your way. This time, oh. you are unaffected. Uh, you are, un uh, you are Not without its... the protection of a cliffside. So, thanks to your high passive perceptions. We, I know we, what... we have protection. We don't have protection. You, do, you don't have. Like, un unlike last time. That we have you no had there were rocks. There were rocks. I will say now, there are a bunch of rocks, but this time, I will make this a skill challenge and not just a straight-up, you know, deck save. Now. Can, skill can challenge. Itsuki do the rope trick? But no, then fit with Harshnag. Harshnag swapped. Well, Harshnag won't be affected by the cold, though. I was hoping that he could just shield us. <laughs> well, Harshnag might not be affected by the cold, but by the... But the avalanche. Bludgeoning. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, up to him. If you trust Harsh now. Mm, we could do you. both. Up we could do, we could do a rope trick. Four I will say I... I'll say one round. I'll say one round. So each of you have one well, you can give me one action or like one skill check. So uh yeah, just give me a skill check or yeah, basically just give me one thing you want to do. Okay. And then of course justify the skill check. But like again, spells or whatever are open. Hmm. Spells are op open. Yeah, you, you have. Yeah, thanks to the high passive perceptions, you you are not caught. You are not surprised, <laughs> so you can do something. So yeah, what will the party do? Well, let's do the road trick. Anybody have any spells for that? Oh shit! Are we allowed movement speed? Yeah, one no, round. I, anything in one round. One round. So, um, if I want my full 30 plus 30 movement, then dashed, uh, will I be able to get out of the way of the main brunt of the avalanche? I, you'll, I'll oh. say you'll get away from most, but like, maybe not all from mm -hmm. what you've seen, what you, what Itsuki and Malak have pointed towards. Um, it's a pretty big avalanche coming your way. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's the only idea I have right now for, for me. Well, 
I'm gonna do the rope trick. Okay. And then possibly, can we do it in a way where the people that might fail their first skill check can jump in and join? Well, if we're all together, oh, well, no movement. If you want them, yeah, I can. Yeah. I think we can all make it, except Harsh. Is it a, is it athletics or acrobatics or what? Dexterity. Dexterity. Or you can justify whatever. For what? Justify which it. one? For which For one? What? How does Rope trick. Oh, the rope. He's just gonna oh, make no, a it, dimensional it, pocket, and then we have just we just have to climb is, up. Yeah, what does it look like? Okay. Just like there's a it's, hole on the sea. There's a the hole sky, in the. And then we just, the there's sky. a rope. Can you just? And we can just okay, climb up, okay. go in. There's a trap door in the sky, and then a rope falls out. So you're just climbing go? the tree. Uh, you're climbing the tree house. <laughs> okay, it. okay. It's fairly simple. Yeah, yeah. I I can do that as well. Yeah. I, I, free action, I just ask uh, Harshnag if we're gonna be safe there, but what about you? Do you need help? Yeah, yeah, Harshnag just like, Harshnag just like, yeah, just get in there. Like, you can't handle this. How about you? Uh, remind me if you need to, but it's easier to save me than it is to save you. Um, <laughs> uh... oh. Will so, increase will increasing oh, his armor class help wait. at all? No, I oh. think maybe no. I'll tell Harshnag. I think we may need to do something together. I can cast fly on touch a willing creature. It didn't say what size. The target gains a flying speed of six. There we go. Duration. So he he'll just be flying above the avalanche. Yeah. So both cool. Harshnag and I will be flying. Okay. Okay. And then the rest. We'll and climb rest. up the rope trick. Okay. I'll be beside uh uh Weevil in case we need uh in case we need to go quicker. Okay. So yeah. Well, sorry. So is everyone okay with this plan? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. It's key. Yeah, how how does like when it's he cast rope trick, how does it look like? I just like uh you know, uh like wave up and then the hole opens up in the sky and I urge everybody to follow and along. And then a rope drops. Yeah. yeah, is it like is it like a hole, a trap door? Like Yeah, it, it it's kind of like a little swirly dark uh portal. Uh oh, okay. much okay. like the shadowy uh, things that will uh, like m much like the shadowy things that envelops me when I do my my pass without a trace, but becomes a, a little tiny whirlpool in the sky and drops a rope. Looks okay, like okay. a giant sphincter in the sky. <laughs> 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 so yeah, so for the four of you, you all hurriedly climb up this rope track, and you see, um, and yeah, you. Uh, I think inside is transparent. Uh, you can see the outside from inside, right? Yeah. Based on the sculpture. Yeah, the floor yeah. you can see, like yeah. Yeah, you you are and you enter this extra dimensional space, and you feel the temperature stabilize for a little bit. The winds aren't as uh, the, there are no winds here, so it's not as strong. How uh, uh, this is in vast contrast to um, uh, Asumedos and Harshna, who. Uh, fly up instead and are buffeted by winds in all directions um you generally just know that you just have to go as high as you can but due to the intense amount of snowstorm the snow happening right now um you can't really tell how high you are but yeah you just go higher and higher and higher and you you listen as this rumble of snow and debris all fall down beneath you um asumedos and harshna for everyone else, you're traveling through the avalanche as it meets this dimensional area, and you are literally inside the avalanche, but you are protected, and you see, you know, bits of debris, rocks and and rocks and sto uh, rocks and um, branches, and even whole trees just zoom past by you as the avalanche. Could rage us on. And this happens for like roughly a quick 
like three minutes maybe tops till everything settles um Harshnag gives you the signal that you can go down now, uh, Asomedos. Okay. And go fly down to, you know, it's I'd say right now it's like difficult terrain since the snow's like loose and everything. Yeah. Uh, for the rest of you, you kind of have to dig yourself out really as this the avalanche has. So uh... huh? I know actually. I'll, I'll probably you... kind of hover above this the snow, and try okay, to look okay. for. For the place where these guys are. Yeah. And if I find um, something, I can like help dig <sighs> them out. Yeah. Actually, no, I will. You don't, you don't have to dig down. You don't have to dig yourself out. But like, um, dig out. It's the height isn't as big as, as you entered. <laughs> and you all <laughs> safely climb out of the rope trick. And yeah, you are in this loose uh, snow. But. Nevertheless, all of you are safe from this avalanche. No skill checks needed. Mine's a spell slot, though. Oh, it's true. And you all safely continue on. Well, carefully now, due to the loose snow. Um... I'll see I, now. Ever, uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I will um, equip my rod of the pack keeper, and then I will regain one warlock spell as an action while holding the rod. Okay. Uh, you're a, are you a tune? Uh, is that the card tune? Yeah. I think I should okay. have a. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. And yeah, for now, just let's just see. Uh, can everyone roll me an acrobatics check? Hey, uh, wait. Uh, you uh, pala? Sorry. Tatlo lang, no? Yeah. Okay, so no. I'll need to attune ulit. So, di na muna. Later na lang. So I yeah, have what did stack of defense, ring of protection, and headband with intellect. Oh, sige. I want na muna. What do we roll? Sorry? Acrobatics. Acrobatics. Critical fail. So, yeah. Okay. Where's my dice? Uh, we will roll uh, from the dice an 18. Uh, Shivra, how about you? 21. It's key. Uh, 15. Asomedos. 19 plus 3. 22. Uh, yeah. As everyone's gingerly going over the snow, uh, you hear a f- as uh, Malak accidentally falls in. <laughs> Um, I do the angel. Must be all the must be all the heavy armor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, you feel yourself being pulled up by Harshnag, uh, and you're safely put in next to the hole. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> um, you gingerly continue through this path for the rest of the day. And yeah, as the path continues, um, weirdly, nothing yet has happened. Uh, well, aside from the avalanche, but again, it seems that the higher you are, the less things are there to see you, which could be either a good thing or a bad thing. But you continue on, and uh, I'd say it's key. I'd say with enough time, you're able to find a suitable camping site. Uh, for you and the rest of the party. Next. Uh, it is a basically this cap is situated between two rock, uh, two large rocks, and you take shelter literally between two rocks since there is nothing else all around you that could sufficiently, you know, uh, give shelter. And if nothing else happens, we can continue on to the next day. I will um, unattune the stuff. Ah, yeah. No problem. And you can do that over the... So, yeah. Uh, actually. As we are higher, uh, roll me... Someone roll me a d4. Four. 
Yankee four. Yankee four. Blue. Got one. One. <laughs> uh, as you wake up, most of the snowstorm has disappeared, and you are greeted okay. by oh, light snowfall. There are no ill effects otherwise. And due to this, you know, uh, lucky turn, most of you're actually able to make good ground as you continue on. And as you're getting higher and higher and higher and closer to your goal, this, even with the light snowstorm, the chill starts settling in. And at the end of the day, everyone, please roll me a constitution saving throw. Yeah, Plus three, guys. Three. Yeah, I assume Plus at this three. point, everyone's like huddled together. Because right. it is so... Fucking cold. Okay. <laughs> I yes. rolled for Weevil na rin. Okay. Okay. Asomados got 13 plus 4 plus 3. So that's 20. Um, Weevil got 14 plus 1, 15 plus 3, 18. Okay. Mala? 17. It's key? Uh, ooh, sorry, 16 plus 3, 19. Shivra? 10 plus 12 plus 3. 10 plus 12? Oh, wait, at uh, 12? Oh, wait, no, sorry. 10 plus uh, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11, 10, yeah, sorry. 10 plus 11, so that's 21. Plus eight, your con save, mo. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, you're proficient. It's strength. You're proficient. Yeah. So okay. yeah, ten one. Yeah, you're proficient. You're proficient, lah. What did you roll? Uh, I rolled a ten, and okay. then my and then my con three. mod is eight. And then three plus save. Plus, plus three. Ah, so, no, yes. Okay. Yeah, ten plus eight plus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. DC was a fifteen. You're all safe. Oh. Yay! As you continue on, climbing higher and higher and higher. And after another night's rest, uh, someone else roll me a d4. Okay. Yeah. Ah, no, Isa got Isa was right. Ay, Isa para kita ah. Camera. It is a two. Two. Ooh, uh, you want something low. Two. The winds are not strong, but the snowfall has increased. It is now heavy snowfall. Um, it, visibility is a bit low, is lowered, but thankfully there are no strong winds to amplify the cold. But nevertheless. Your altitude itself is enough to, you know, make everything fucking freezing. <laughs> and as you continue trudging on, your footsteps get heavier and heavier. Every breath is, every time you exhale, it, it conjures like a thick mist in front of you. And like even Harshnag, you see even Harshnag starts training against the sheer altitude and the lack of oxygen it entails. And as you continue on and on and on, higher and higher and higher, as the day goes on, the, the snowfall, the winds actually pick up. And as the wind picks up, and as the wind picks up, visibility is blocked even more. And at some point, you can hear Harshnag in the distance point to something that you can't you know, make out the shape of, but he starts pointing at something and you hear in a muffled voice, there, I see it just beyond the bridge 
And as you get closer, 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 you he- see finally what he's pointing to. Finally, you see beyond you. You see um, grand columns against a large cliff face that is the entrance to what seems to be a grand building. But to get to it, you have to cross a bridge. Of you have to cross a bridge that connects you. And what seems to be the eye of the All Father, from a ca- from a chasm, thousands of feet deep, and as this and uh, with this, you know, specific geographical, you know, configuration in front of you, the winds can't help but funnel through this area, increasing the cold even more. Please make me one last Constitution saving. God time. damn it! There we go. I'll, I'll pull a picture. I'll pull a picture. It's a nice visual. It's it. nice. That's not good. I think it's the wrong one. Eight. So, I need to do this. I don't know. So, oh. <laughs> Everybody seemingly rolled wrong. Uh, Damn it. What are we doing? Con save. Con save. save. I failed. I am 6 plus 2 plus 3. <laughs> 8, 11 total. I got a 13. 14 plus 8 plus 3. Damn. Is... You're safe. Yeah, but stop. 18 plus 4 plus 3. <laughs> no. Okay, Asumeras, what you get? Asumeras got a 5, plus 4, 9, plus 3, 12. 12. Weevil um, got 15, plus 1, 16, plus 3, 19. 19. Okay. You all run and rush through and are able to make uh, run across this stone bridge. I said it on Messenger what this area looks like. Um... Okay. And as you, and as you run through, and as you finally get out of the cold, uh, you're fi- you, Everyone except Weevil and and Shivra gain one level of exhaustion. Oh, shucks, two levels now. But one only. As you enter this place, what you were looking at a corridor, a very long corridor. And thankfully, the winds are most, well, uh, you are protected mostly from the winds. You are exhausted, yes. Well, most of you are. But it seems that you have finally made it to your destination. The Eye of the Alpha. <sighs> We're here. Yes. First the exhaustion. Uh, I think status on the behind uh, under your portrait. I, yeah, you can add it in their portrait. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Okay. So yeah. And as you are looking down this long corridor, yeah, you just hear Weevil behind you. So oh, finally, fucking made it. And yeah. We can start exploring this place next week. Sweet. This is a very large map, so I'm still planning out the logistics of how this will go. But yeah. And and as I this two level of exhaustion, everybody else. One, one. except for Weevil and Shivra. Shivra zero and Weevil one. Yes. Or Shivra or or she Weevil also. Both zero. zero. Okay. Both zero goes. So me, yeah, one. What happens with exhaustion again? Uh, first, uh, if you have the, one ability yeah. check or two, what's two disadvantage on attack rolls? Yeah. Let me check. Yeah, I have two. This is. Oh no no no! Why? Your speed is half. 
Shit. Okay. Yeah, level three is that attack rolls. No, that's okay. level three. But I also have disadvantage on saving throws. No, no ability checks. Mm -hmm. uh, ability checks. Okay. Yeah, attack rolls and saving throws. That's both a level three. Okay. But if I take a decent long rest, I remove one level. Yeah, but like not in this place because yeah. everything's still so oh. cold. Mm -mm. All right. So yeah, uh, I think this is a good place to cut. Um, you finally made it to the Eye of the All Father. Mm -hmm. And hopefully with your Dreamwalker dice, you may influence, you know, a key role in the future. So let's see if you're going to make use of that. And yeah, let's see what secrets this place has. A very, very ancient, very, very holy site for giant kind. There we go. And with that, we're very excited to find out what's going to happen next week. So for all you viewers out there, we thank you for joining us on Twitch. And if you are watching this on YouTube, uh, our Twitch um, address is www.twitch.tv slash plus 63HP. That's P-L-U-S number six, number three, the HP. All right. Now, we're also available on social. So follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter or X. That's also with the same um, name, plus 63HP. Uh, you may also listen to us on our podcast of choice. Yeah, um, listen to us on Apple, Spotify, and Amazon podcasts as well. So with that, enjoy not just D&D, but a lot of other shows that will keep you entertained. My brothers would love to review more shows for you guys. And we do react to your comments. So please write your thoughts. Tell us what you think we should do. Uh, let us know what we should have done and you know we'll, we'd love to hear from you we promise to respond with that any final goodbyes from Mr. Beast and uh, Mr. Beast today Mr. Jones looking forward to exploring this giant giant place next week uh, and thank you very much for your patronage and so we'll see you in the next video thank you how about you Chewy yeah, here we go. I hope we get more answers now about the Giants and this uh, two-year-in-the-making uh, story of the uh, ordering. So, and hopefully it doesn't cost us our lives. It has been two years. Amazing two years. Flew by so fast. Next up, of course, uh, let's hear it from Isa B. Yeah, this was a fun episode. I always enjoy a nice uh, deep lore dive, deep dive about our characters. And uh, this is the Malak. start of something. Mm -hmm. Malak did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I am excited to see how this goes. All right. And of course... Let's hear it from our amazing Dungeon Master, Angelo. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, nice change of pace from all the combat. So, thankfully, with uh, your, all your, you're able to use your tools to circumvent the natural uh, obstacle, such as the avalanche. Um, and yeah, um, yeah, you're able, yeah, let's see what happens when we finally explore, uh, the eye of the all father and yeah let's see we shall see so with that we're all holding our breath till next week we'll all see you again on the next episode we love you and goodbye bye bye best